Expanding our knowledge through those amongst us is a privilege we take for granted. Join me as we explore the minds of our fellow beings to unlock their knowledge for ourselves. It is time for a guest entry. But first, a quick disclaimer. Most of the guests I've had on were recorded through Discord due to us being long distance. If the quality dips, it's due to my connection. But I hope each of these conversations brings you new knowledge of the creative and cultural arts. Today, I have on Matt Waterhouse an indie author that writes in the sci-fi, fantasy, and horror genres. He has written standalone novels titled Red Saints, The Eye of the Universe, and has an ongoing series known as Kodiak and the Four Guardians. He is also a tabletop RPG fan and can be found on YouTube at his channel called The Alchemy Lab. He is currently DMing a D&D campaign titled The Shattered Lands. If you enjoy some steampunk fantasy, neural-style storytelling with some mystery-solving detectives, be sure to give his channel an additional sub and smash those like buttons. So without further ado, here is our conversation. Alrighty, so today we have on Matt Waterhouse, who is an indie author that writes sci-fi, fantasy, and horror genres. Matt, thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. So I know both of us have very similar kind of backgrounds. We both like tabletop RPGs and kind of utilize that to uh, help us with creating whatever we're, we're creating. I'm not sure how, like to the extent in which you use them to inspire your own writing and, and your own stories that you, that you tell. Um, but why don't you kind of like explain where where you started with with that whole scene and uh and with writing in general your background i would say your origin story oh cool <laughs> all right um uh, well i was sort of for a long time i was split between a couple of different things so i've always been quite arty and i was sort of i was split between acting and and writing as a as a thing to do yeah yeah i sort of had equal equal loves of that and um it kind of comes out when i in in the dming because i like I, I love doing all the voices and things like that and same and like embodying all the characters yeah yep. yeah <laughs> I, I sometimes sometimes i'm the only one doing it like in a game yeah. i feel a bit like oh okay i feel like both <laughs> if both of us were in a game it would it would it would be top notch then because <laughs> we, we, we <laughs> yeah. both would do the voices and all that stuff yeah, top notch voice work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like I'm, I'm playing a game later tonight where I was, <laughs> I was the only one doing a voice. Oh, like for the entire thing, and it was like a gruff sort of South African kind of, kind of thing. Yeah, well, sort of South African slash clone trooper. Oh, but like, yeah, <laughs> but um, it, it sort of. Yeah, I was the only one doing that, and I'm still doing it because I'm like, I'm not going to stop now. Like that's. Yeah, that's against my nature. Yeah, you, if if you keep it going, you got you just you just have to keep it going throughout the entire campaign. So I mean, sometimes oh, yeah. sometimes I'll like I'll choose a voice and then I'll forget that voice because I have so many different <laughs> voices, and then I'll start doing a different one, and someone will be like, "Why? Why do you sound different?" Oh, sorry, that was something lodged in my throat. <laughs> <laughs> I do that. I do that when I'm running a game all the time. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's like someone will suddenly become Irish. Yeah, yeah, out of nowhere. Yeah, whenever I'm whenever I'm running a game, I'll end up using a, a voice for another character, and then they're like, "Why do all the characters sound the same?" It's like, "Oh, I'm so sorry. I forget. <laughs> I forget which one is for, for, for which." Got to write those things down, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I I genuinely do. Yeah. And like one of my notebooks is full of an NPCs and what voice they have, mm. so I know. So, but do- um. Okay, go keep going. Okay, yeah. So, um, yeah, I was sort of split between the two, acting and, and writing, and then 
university killed my love of acting. Oh, I'm um, so sorry. Because it was, it was so well. Like, and what well, to be fair, I still, I still love doing it. I just, I hated studying it. So we had a module um, in our first year called acting, scripting, and directing, and we did none of those things in the module. <laughs> Wow, it was it was weird, um, but none and also like none of them. Wow, absolutely none of them. Dang. And the other thing that sort of the other thing that sort of killed it was the other people who I don't know if you found this because it sounds like you you've done a bit of kind of drama and acting before well, in some way, shape, or form. I, actually, yes, I I was in a musical, well, multiple two two musicals in high school, so. I have I have my fair share of it, and I've been an avid role player even before I started playing tabletop RPGs. I, I was like a role player mm-hmm. on, on an MMO, Star Star Wars MMO, actually. So, mm-hmm. o- old right? Republic. Okay. Uh, mm. Right. Okay. Well, I think high school high school stuff was was fun. I really loved it in high school. Yeah. But in when it went came to university, the kind of person that did it radically changed into this kind of like bitchy backstabbing machiavellian oh. sort of horror horrific people and like the the professors we had were were bad i think one of them was a massive pervert really so, oh gosh yeah so <laughs> and yeah in my second year so um she was she was a lesbian and we noticed that whenever a girl took their clothes off, she encouraged she encouraged the girls to take their clothes off in their pieces. It was more live art type stuff. Yeah, she encouraged she encouraged that, and then they would always get really high marks if they did it. Oh my god! And we were like, ah, now we see where this is going. Playing okay. favorites, pretty exactly. Uh, yeah, interesting. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly, and it was it was very like demoralizing. As a, yeah, it's, as like, a dude. it's like, dude, I, I I don't got that stuff. Why, why, why am I supposed to do anything? Exactly, exactly, and it's like it's like the whole thing of like it's not always dudes that are creeps. It's yeah, it's often other people as well. Yeah, um, but I think around it was after that kind of where I got into to um D and D. I think I played four fourth edition with uh, um oh yeah with Lee and Carl actually, who are the other guys on the Alchemy Lab. Oh. Oh yeah. And um Yeah, yeah I, I, I played I, fourth I, edition. I, I would like you to go into go into that at some point too, so we we can go into that too. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. Um yeah, well Lee was was the DM was the uh, GM. Well, I, they're both the same. Um, for for the game that we did, um, we in fourth edition, mm. and that game we did sort of ended up becoming my first novel. Oh, really? Eventually, which which yeah. novel was that? Did did you publish that one or? I I, I published that one. Yeah, that was um, out of the ashes. Out of the ashes, which okay. is the the yeah the first of the the four guardians series mm. which is my fantasy series yeah and uh i'm on the uh i'm on the f- the final book of that now mm. so it's you're f- you're kind of u- book series you're kind of using the D campaign your first D D campaign as like as a kind of inspiration for your writing and stuff it was it was inspiration for the first book and a half i would say okay and then you just kind of kept it and going. after that yeah, well, after it, well, during the second one, it kind of spun off in a different direction, mm. and it sort of stepped away from the kind of fantasy zip zap boom defeat the bad guy, yeah, blah, that kind of thing. It sort of stepped away from that because I, I, th- I thought about the practicality of it. Like I'd almost written myself into a corner where that kind of thing wasn't going to end well. Yeah, because the the basic premise of it was that these these four heroes, the heroes of the story, they died in a battle and then they were resurrected a century later. And in that century, the country is now occupied 
by um, the people who they were fighting against. Mm. And they were like embedded in the culture. And I went, I've embedded them in the culture. So if I, if I go like, we're going to kick you all into the sea, this is going to end in like fire and blood and tears, much like Game of Thrones season eight. <laughs> yeah, season eight. Oh, gosh. So I was li- <laughs> Right, yeah. So I thought, I can't do that. I have to, I have to be smarter about it. Mm-hmm. And it's taken a lot longer to write them as a consequence and the books have gotten lots longer as a consequence, but um, I'm sort of, I'm happy with how they're going. Yeah. And they've sort of been unconsciously, they've reflected some of the stuff we're going through at the moment in like the U S and the UK. Yeah. To be honest, not on purpose. Yeah, no, no. I, I feel like you utilizing that stuff is actually a good way to inform people I mean, then again, there is also a lot of content out there that already has all of the hints as to what is going on in our current day world, but people just don't take those hints. People don't understand it. Like even in like Marvel movies, freaking Captain America and like Win- the Winter Soldier, that that is a good example of what can go wrong in the world and what mm. is kind of currently going wrong in the world is a, like an authoritarian like cabal coming coming together and, and taking over all of our institutions and all that stuff so mm-hmm. all these things we just need to kind of we need to sh- shine the light on it and so if if we're using that as inspiration for our own writing even if like we generally are like subconsciously doing it i still think that is a good idea to do it just because you know it gets the word out there it gets some people thinking about certain things certain concepts no absolutely yeah absolutely yeah completely well the thing like i'm i'm trying to draw a line in my head between because i don't want to i don't want to be the kind of writer that beats people over the head with a political message yeah no so no. i'm like i'm trying to be like cuz i'm not i'm not really that i mean i i, I i'm interested in in politics and stuff cuz it's because it's such a measure of what's happening. Yeah, it it but I, Yeah, it's like staying you want to stay informed about what is going on in the world, but you don't want mm. to make it control your life and how you create your own products or whatever whatever you're creating. That's mm. that's and, what the issue that have people have today. <laughs> mm. And it's so negative as well. That's yeah. the other thing. Yeah. It's so negative and like negativity like the kind of like um like the black pill is so negative and so like infectious it's almost like its own virus yeah and i'm like i don't want to do that i, I, I don't want to like feed them you know what i mean mm-hmm. yeah, yeah i want to approach it in a i want to approach it in like a constructive way like how can we actually get out of this situation we're in you yeah. know what i mean yeah exactly so, um, yeah. so you, you took your, your acting, your acting courses. And then after that, you went into D and D with, with your current game, like players in fourth edition. Um, what do you mm-hmm. think of fourth edition? Uh, I, I, I don't, this may not be a popular opinion, but I prefer 5e to 4e. Oh, um, I, I don't I, know what it was about. For, but, I I agree uh, that, that was, fourth edition was my was my first D anD D experience, and I was like, ah, I don't like it. <laughs> it 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 feels like it takes forever. Uh huh. Is my issue with it? Yeah. And like I haven't played three point five. I've heard great things about three point five, and I'd be curious about it. Have you played Pathfinder? Um, no, no, I haven't played Pathfinder. Yeah, I know Pathfinder was molded after three point five. Uh, edition mm. so if you were okay. quite it, i know there's like there's a bit more complexity than like a, a lot more complexity than uh than D 5e um mm. D 5e was made like mainly meant to be to bring on new players whereas uh 3.5 was like oh you can you can break the game and become a god <laughs> kind, of, <laughs> kind of kind of situation <laughs> yeah well this this the thing though with 5e it worked for me because like f- like four fourth edition 
it was like I, i'm enjoying this but it's i'm not i'm enjoying it enough to keep playing it week on week because our campaign was it lasted quite a while yeah um and then it kind of split off it kind of stopped when i had to leave because i was i i am a i'm a teacher as well as a, a writer hmm. and i i teach overseas so it was my first trip out what do you and teach? i had to I just teach English as a foreign language. Oh. Yes. Um, That's pretty good. And it's, yeah, well, it's just, it's, it's fun. You know, it's, it's a fun job and it's engaging. Yeah. I think is the main thing. And it lets you, if you do it in a certain way, it lets you travel around quite a bit. Hmm. And that's what I've done. Where, um, where, where do you teach? Well, at the moment I teach in my home city. Oh. Because um, because a certain virus, yeah, uh, sort of stopped everything stopped everything happening for a while. Yeah, <laughs> um, but before that, I was in um, I was basically in Tokyo. Oh, um, sweet! Yeah, I have a I have a friend that 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 was something that he actually wanted to try doing is going and teaching English in in Japan. Mm. But I mean, this COVID situation that that kind of screwed everything up. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I recommend it actually. Yeah, for anyone who's even sort of vaguely interested in that area, I definitely recommend it. Especially if you're, I recommend it if you're young. Mm-hmm. Actually, I recommend it for anybody, but especially if you're young, because yeah. it will give you a chance to like travel, go out, and yeah, we'll get fresh perspectives mm-hmm. and see what happens in other places. Because it's not like it's not like traveling and backpacking where you're you're in a place for two weeks. And then you go and to you, a, new, like, a new place. You're not like right, yeah. You're not staying exactly. within the culture for an extended period of time. Mm, right, yeah. So I've, I mean, the the shortest time I've been somewhere is about six months, mm. and it's usually about a year. Yeah. Um, and it gives you different cultural perspectives, and that has definitely helped with writing. Yeah, it, I bet. <laughs> yeah, it it lets me kind of. Um, because you see how all these th- people are different and in what manner they're different and where their quirks are and what they like what they love doing and what they hate doing and who they love and who they hate hmm. and how that manifests and it always manifests in different ways did you have to learn japanese before you went there um i tried to learn a bit while i was there the yeah. thing about being in in tokyo is Everyone, everyone is used to seeing foreigners who look a little bit puzzled. Yeah. So they're really good at communicating. Okay. In, <laughs> that, that's good. Even that's if good. they don't speak English, it's like body language will will sort it. Um, but uh, in in places, so I was in. So my second trip out was in Hungary, hmm. and I was in um, a town called Tisa Vashivari, which is close to Ukraine. Oh wow. Um, and it, it's a town of like 15,000 and no one spoke English there. Oh, wow. And that was like terrifying, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but very rewarding, you know, and yeah. I had to learn a, a decent amount of Hungarian, which is a very difficult language to learn, but, and I've forgotten most of it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so w- with your, with your, uh, teaching abroad and, and all that stuff with D and D and your stories did all of that kind of coalesce into your current store stories that you've written, like, so Red Saints and the Eye of, of the Universe and all that stuff. I, I haven't, I haven't gotten to read them. I, I was, I, I'm actually about to buy Kodiak, like the, the one that you just writ- wrote. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, so so Red Saints and the Eye of the Universe are, are sci-fi. Yeah. And they are they're a lot different <laughs> to the fantasy one. Um so I would say like the one I, I I would say Eye of the Universe is the one I'm the most proud of hmm. out of all the ones I've written. Because it was so it was an idea that was germinating in my head for about for about two years, I think. And 
I yeah, just couldn't work out how to do it. Hmm. Um, because I think because it was such a weird idea and it was so limited as an idea. Like, so there's only two characters in it and one of them's dead. So it's, it's like, what do you do with that? And how do you kind of, how do you work it out? Yeah. And it, it sounds more psychological in nature. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's sort of psychological. So that's, that's where like the horror kind of came in. Yeah. It's sort of this dream like, well, uh, Go on. What was the setting? Uh, what's the setting of of it? So, Eye of the Universe is is set on a on the sort of shipwreck of a interstellar cruise liner mm. that was fleeing an interstellar war. That starts in Red Saints, so they follow on from each other, but they're not they're loosely connected. They're same universe, but but um, separate stories, okay. so you can read them in, in any order. Um, but this um, st- uh, Starliner is fleeing the war, and there's a disaster aboard. And they've, they've been like taking refugees to a safe haven, what they think will be a safe haven, and they're all in stasis. And one of them wakes up. Only one of them wakes up, and he and they're obviously very confused. Hmm. And they find this dead guy, and the dead guy is their only companion, because as far as they're aware, they're alone on this ship, and they have to find. They basically have to survive, yeah, and stay sane at the same time. Oh, jeez, and like it, and it's sort of about. It's sort of about finding a goal and about pushing towards something and kind of defeating despair. Yeah. And defeating loneliness. And that one, I wrote that one in Japan. Hmm. And Japan, I'll tell you right now, Japan is a lovely place. Yes. But it is probably it's the most lonely place I've been. And I was in exactly the right headspace, I think, to write the book, and that's how it got how it got done. Um, but it's it is definitely the book I'm most proud of. I'll, I'll make sure to check it out. Everyone should check it out too. Uh, the end, the edge of the universe, right? That is the the eye of the the, the, the eye of the universe. Apologies. It's also it's my best reviewed as well. Okay, and it it got it got some. It got a bit of traction on on mines, which was very nice. Oh yes, yeah. Another author on there, I think it's Leslie Leslie Sh- Leslie Shway. I think her name. I'm not sure how to pronounce her surname, but she's been shouted it out every chance she gets. Oh, wow. and I that's, think she should nice. be my agent at this point. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. every time I see it, it just warms my heart. But yeah, it's um, that's definitely that... well, the one I'm most proud of. That's awesome. Um, and. Is- for for your new series, the Kodiak series, is it set in the same universe? Yes, it is. Yeah. So that's yeah, series of novellas. Yeah. Um, I think um, Trial by Fire, the first one. I think that's one hundred and thirty pages, something like that. Um, so it's just kind of short, sort of eight or nine chapter uh, stories. The plan is to put out four of them a year. Yeah. Oh, so cool. I reckon it'll be it'll be two this year. So it'll be Trial by Fire and the second one, which will be Dance with the Devil. Mm. And then next year there'll be four. And that will continue for as long as I can put them out. Well, I'm, I'm re- I have I'm reading the back of it right now. On the front line of the interstellar holy war, the the crew of the ES E D S V Kodiak are in trouble. The captain and first officer are dead, leaving the Kodiak's pariah of a second officer in charge, Orson Grant, the last person anyone would want in the in, in the center chair. Now he wait is this kind of like influenced by like Star Trek in a, in a way? Because I'm, I'm very much so. I, I'm getting Star Trek vibes here, and I and I, oh, I like yeah. it. <laughs> 
Very much so. I will not hide that one bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've been. I, I just finished the first season of of Star Trek, um, like the original series, and and uh-huh. I've I've been enjoying it. I, I've I've come to realize that the second season, like, I feel like it has a different. Did it have a different director? Or I so. Ah, okay. I think it may have, yeah. I think they cycled through directors yeah. and writers throughout that one. And I know like the the music choice was different. Like the scoring of it is is mm. is very much different. I, I I can the sensations of it. It doesn't feel as similar as like the first season is. Mm. But that's just like my opinion on, on, on it. I don't know. Um I'm still trying to get like, it- get through it. So how how are you finding it? How are you finding the original? The original series is it's entertaining to watch because of just like how how old it is. Um, mm. But I I I'm enjoying it very very much. So it's actually giving me some like inspiration to to uh, my own my own sci fi like storytelling of how how I I plan on use using like ship ship travel like tra- traveling across like the the stars. And like mm-hmm. the the expanse of it all, and also like going in because because inside my my universe, when when I when I go to write like new stuff, like new lore about it, I usually play my game Reborn in Power, and then mm-hmm. I I use that as the kind of the foundation of whatever lore I'm writing, and then I'll like I'll use that to inspire myself to write like different entries and parts of the of the. Uh, podcast itself mm. and um and i like how star trek it's it feels very much like an anthology in a way where you like they will just go and land on different planets and different stories will, will be happening whereas in like star wars it's like an over like it's a full overarching kind of thing where where the war is going on and all these different pieces are being played with and all that stuff but in mm. this in in Star Trek, it feels very like like they're alone. There, there's no one that's going to help them across the stars, and they have to they have to work with what they have in that area on that planet. And that's it. That's, really, fi- yeah. The 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 stakes get higher and higher, and I and I really enjoy that. Yeah, it really feels like they're they're on the frontier. Yeah, yeah, and discovering new things. Yeah, and and, that, and it's I think it's that sense of discovery that really like um that really just captured people yeah. at the time. Yeah, I'm 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 excited to fit to finish this original series because then I I can go on to the the other the other different series with like uh Captain Picard and and mm. all those stuff. I I, I I'm just getting into Star Trek because I I've been a Star Wars fan for so long and like I I know that like Trekkies has a huge like there's just a huge fan base out there. And I just want to have a better view of like science fiction and and all that stuff um, Mm -hmm. that I can get so that it can help inspire me. Go on. Yeah, man. I mean, it's, this is the, the I was basically raised on Star Trek. Yeah. I think from my dad, really. And it's, it remains a kind of bonding thing between me and him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I was never raised on any of that stuff. I was mainly raised on, uh, music and mm-hmm. going to see movies, <laughs> just random movies. So, mm. yeah, movies as well. Yeah, movies as well. They're a big thing with with my dad. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of things like the Lord of the Rings. I think part of it is like, um, I think part that's part of why I, I get so passionate about some of these things because they have a link to to family and they have a link to that kind of thing. Yeah, like Lord of the Rings, I also I also love. Yeah, and um, yeah, and Star Wars to be fair, although that's fallen off a cliff somewhat. Yeah, I I mean I I've if 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 have you been paying attention to the new Star Wars content that's going on on Disney Plus? Even though I hate Disney Plus, like I I, I, I thankfully I don't pay for it, so <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Um, so I think the the Last Jedi. Um, basically killed it for me 
Oh, and I went, I don't think I can watch any more Star Wars. Although I did watch season one of The um, the Mandalorian. Yeah, yeah. The, so you watched Clone Wars too, right? The, the... Bits. I watched a few episodes here and there. That is, in my opinion, the best Star Wars content out there. Um, once mm-hmm. you get once you get to around like season three to four, that's when it starts really picking up, and then it it's great. It it's amazing. I've heard this. I've heard that that the Clone Wars is very good. Yeah, and and like there's like full on like decapitations inside there, dude. And like they 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 started out thinking, okay, uh, let's market to the kids and stuff, right? And so they made it into like a childish TV show, but then they realized that their entire audience was weren't kids. It was mo- mostly like adults who who just enjoy Star Wars, and then they were like, okay, so then they changed it up after after season one and then it started getting way way better and it's it it's a great story if you enjoyed the uh like the anic like the anakin era and all that stuff it kind of mm-hmm. shows it shows the prolonged uh experience that anakin kind of went through in, in becoming a dark side user and it, it's between episode one and two well no no not, not one or two uh episodes two and three so, uh, uh, I believe it was Attack of the Clones, and then, mm-hmm. and then Revenge of the Revenge Sith. Revenge of the Sith. Yeah. So it's right between that that time period. It's like I think it's like a five year uh, gap, and it mm-hmm. explains everything. And then you have more appreciation for the prequel trilogy because you because you watch the the Clone Wars, and then their new series, uh, the Bad Batch. They just finished season one. Um, I'm not going to spoil it too much, but. Uh, it it picks up off of the Clone Wars when, when it ends, and it kind of goes into uh, how how clones kind of got got taken out of the picture um, from like from the em- like from when when the Republic was around, and then it transfers to the em- to the Empire and all that stuff. So it's very mm-hmm. it's very interesting to to just watch that kind of take place and Dave Filoni and John Favreau have been tr- have been working their asses off to try to make sure that the legends material can make a comeback and they're and they have more control over it than Kathleen Kennedy now that mm-hmm. like and so it's it's starting to get better they even they even fired a uh, what's her face um the girl that plays Captain Marvel I, I, uh, Brie, Brie Brie Larson. Yeah, they they fired her from from one of her roles that she was about to take, which I'm so happy about because it would have been bad. Really? Yeah. Why? Why did they fire her? Is it because she's uh, a terrible person? Yeah, probably because she's a terrible person. <laughs> but I'm <laughs> I'm I'm very happy about that because they were they were gonna make like Kathleen Kennedy had like this whole series planned out for for her that she was gonna be like she first she was gonna be like Mara Jade like the the uh, Luke's mm. Luke's like wife and stuff, Luke's right? Luke's wife, right? Yeah, and mm. and that that would have been bad. And then she, and then apparently they were going to like, try to like redo all of like the canon lore behind the behind like the whole like gods and entities within the Star Wars universe, and they were going to make <sighs> Brie Larson into one of those gods. Oh come on! And make and make her more powerful than like Ray Luke. All, all the characters combined and like and then and then this, J- John Favreau was like uh 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 no 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 we're not doing that <laughs> this this kind of thing really really annoys me it, yeah it's yeah. it's one of the worst that it's like that it's like taking something established and trying to like force reshape it into your own thing yeah your own image yeah and and, and you, it's I hate it so much it, man. it, it sucks because like they think they think oh people are going to enjoy this because there's so much action involved and they're going to be like super powerful and you just see all this stuff but then it becomes a god modding and then there's no there's no stakes to it you 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 completely kill the character and yeah and the entire story there's no like how there's no struggle there's no struggle there's no progression and and that's that's my issue with nowadays like the the movies and all that stuff like Yesterday, I just went to go see um, uh, the Suicide Squad, the new one. 
Um, mm. And I didn't see the first one because I heard of how bad it was and I just did not want to go be disappointed. And I watched this one. Same. I was told that it was really funny and all that stuff. And uh, mm-hmm. it was entertaining. But then again, I... Nowadays, I just cannot get into movies because they, it just feels like they're just it's a waste of two hours of my time. Mm. Yeah. Well, this is this is the thing. Like the lack of struggle is a real is a real issue for me. Yeah. With um, so I I don't know how big a fan you are of the Mandalorian. Are you, are you enjoy that show? I I I very much enjoyed that show. So I so. I am afraid. I dis- I'm afraid I don't. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and please I'll explain down, why. Yeah. Yeah. I want to. I want to hear. <laughs> I'll, I'll break down my reasoning. Okay. I um. I really liked the first three episodes of season one. Okay. I thought they were brilliant. Like if they put them together, that would have been like one of the better Star Wars movies. I think. Yeah. If they've had the first three just running on from each other, because it's like its own little arc. Yeah. And after that, it sort of got a bit formulaic and I was like, all right. Okay, uh there's okay, we've got we know what's happening now. But then they bring in the um the Empire back into it, like in force. And yeah. the Empire in the Mandalorian suck so bad, I have the like there's no tension for me at all. I'm like these we, we know that so the stormtroopers are like full on shooting Mando and they're, and they're shooting him up and we know he's not going to die because he's wearing that. Well, obviously cause he's got, he's the main character. So yeah. there's a meta reason why we know he's not going to die, Yeah, but he's got that armor, which is impenetrable, even though there's massive gaps in it. And it's just, he's just running at them while he's, while he's like under heavy fire from loads of stormtroopers, yeah, and he's not getting hurt because, of course, he's not getting hurt. He's got this armor, so why? So there's no stakes for me with him. And whenever they're in some kind of chase, the Empire are just crashing their Tie Fighters into stuff and like crashing into each other, yeah, it, and crashing it, into rocks. I, I, I think I like it's the idea that. Whenever, whenever they make these movies and TV shows or whatever, or and all that stuff, it gets to a point where they just enjoy seeing the explosions and the cinematics and mm. all that stuff, and they lose sight of the actual story that's being told right in front of them. Well, here's the thing with the Mandalorian as well. I get why people like it. People like it because it's not insulting them. Like it's it's like um, yeah, this yeah. is the thing with Star Wars at the moment. It's like it is, and it's and it's like fun adventure. And I may be a bit of a curmudgeon, <laughs> like I understand. Like, and I don't like if people like it. I'm, it's fine, right? That's fine. It's like fun adventure. Yeah, but it just doesn't quite. It just doesn't quite do it for me. It re- it reminds me a bit of um of Star Wars Rebels. Oh Wars yeah, Rebels. Yeah, yeah. Where it's like stoop nanigans. And the Empire are awful, and these like six people on one ship are like beating them every week to the extent where they're just not a threat anymore. It's like this show is really because this this is like this is like an insurgency effectively. Yeah, against a galactic empire. Some of these characters are going to need to be hurt at some point. Well, I'm not even saying die, but like they're going to have to take some kind of loss. Will be harmed in some way to raise the stakes here. Did you? Because they need to be raised. Did you ever watch season two of it? I did. Yeah. Yeah. I did. I what? I watched like I think I watched the first two or three seasons of it, and dipped in later on. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Remind me what? Remind me what happened in two? Was it the holocron one where he gets the holocron? In in Rebels or Mandalorian? In Rebels. In Rebels? Oh my gosh, I don't I barely remember Rebels. Yeah, it, yeah Re- me too. Re- Rebels the... Rebels was like it it was like very kiddish again, just like in 
like the first season of the Clone mm. Wars, and they did they didn't like continue with what they were doing in the Clone Wars. They just kind of like started a new thing, and mm. it, but, it it didn't have that evolution that the Clone Wars. Did. Yeah, and and with with the Clone Wars, what was cool about the Clone Wars is that it was focusing on the clones and all the different aspects mm. of like the Jedi in different in different areas of the galaxy. So you were you were seeing different perspectives throughout it all. Whereas in Rebels, yes. it, it was staying with that single perspective of of their group and all that stuff, which is fine. It's kind of like mm. a like a it's kind of like a, a sitcom where it like kind of stays with with those people, and then you kind of get, get the the different like emotions and drama between between the the characters and all that stuff. But yeah, yeah. it never it never kind of branched out of it. Like there was the only time it branched out was when Darth Maul came in. And all that stuff, mm. but then they kind of just... the episode with him and Obi Wan Kenobi was good. That was a good yeah. episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When when he when he had the whole uh, the whole hol- holocron search, and then and then they mm. he went to go see him, and then their fateful their fateful mm-hmm. battle. But like in in Clone Wars, in Clone Wars, they the Darth Maul arc is like my favorite like it goes into the mandalorians and then you just have so much appreciation for obi-wan in in the clone wars and mm-hmm. like just realize how much of a badass he is mm-hmm. yeah we, we've been on star wars for a while now <laughs> <laughs> a little bit yeah yeah well coming back to sort of the point of like um reshaping stuff in in the image of the people who are trying to like seize control of it i think star trek is maybe uh, for me it's the most offensive example of that oh yeah the the, the, the like, newest the newest movies and, oh boy and, man and all that stuff i tell you what right do you know the newest movies the newest movies again this is going to be an unpopular opinion with with people i will i will stand for those movies to a degree I don't mind the JJ verse too much. Like the the first the first one of his is like it's all right. It's just it's like a fun kind of yeah. I, I'm popcorn flick. I'm okay with it. I'm glad that I, I'm glad that he decided to not make it like canon and just made it into an alternate reality and was like, okay, this is an alternate reality, so it, yeah. it has nothing to do with 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 the uni- the universe of the original series. So. So I, I'm, that was the, I'm good. For that. I agree. <laughs> that was a brilliant idea. Yeah. And it's brilliant because in, in that means that in your brain, you can go, okay, I can just separate this. Yeah. Yeah. It's its own thing. It's still Star Trek in a, in a way, but it's its own thing as well. So I can separate it. Yeah. And like the first ones, like 11 is all right. Into Darkness is like half of it is, is all right. And then it just sort of takes a nosedive. Yeah, I won't defend that movie at all. But Beyond, I will defend Beyond to the death. I think that is a great movie. Yeah, that, I, I know that that one that one felt a lot more like how the the Star Trek that that I'm I've been watching, um, mm. like the part where like he he's he's in like he, they're they're traveling through space and he he's getting ready to basically like call it quits, um. And like, it was mm, just, kinda. kinda, and yeah, there's kinda, a reason kinda. for it. Like, yeah, there's a reason for it because it's he's about to, he's about to um, turn. I can't remember what age, but it'll be a year. He'll be a year older than his dad was. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, he, and he's getting kind of. He feels a little bit. It feels aimless what he's doing. Mm-hmm. And like, I understand. I like, I understand that, and it's, and I think it's supported. Um, and I would love to, I don't know, I would love to talk about that, that movie with someone who hated it just to see where they're coming from. Cause there are people out there that hate that movie. And I'm like, I want to, I want to talk you, to you about that. Do you know that? I don't want to change your mind. I just want to know what's going on. Yeah. Do you, but do you, do you feel like, you know, their reasoning behind why they hate it? To a degree. And like, so are you aware, are you aware of the, the critical drinker? on youtube uh no i'm not so i think some of it is so i think part of it is going to be 
So I, I've watched some of his video on it. I think part of it is that certain scenes ape scenes that came before in in the original movies. I think the the action is something that they don't like the over sort of overdoing the action and sort of the crazy kind of action stuff they're not a fan of. No one is a fan of the Beastie Boys being used yeah. in any of the movies. Yeah. yeah. Um I know some of the reasons. I'd like to hear them in more detail to be fair. Hmm. I'd like to hear the reasoning in more detail. But um yeah, it just it's always been like um I don't know, it just seems like it just seems like they haven't they're not taking it in they're taking it as something it's not. Yeah. And it may be the separation I have in my head between the JJ verse and and the originals. But I was I've stepped I I I, I tangent we tangented there for a second. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got distracted. This is the thing, I get distracted easily by Star Trek yeah. <laughs> when when I'm talking about it. Yeah. Uh the the newest series. Yeah, I was about to say the newest series. I I want to hear Discovery it. onwards. Yeah, like I watched I watched four episodes of Discovery, and I I couldn't watch any more. Like it was just it was brainless schlock with like a a mer- with the uh, the main character being basically like a genius and. But also, like, I, it, it's so hard to describe that that series like without the, like. There's no swearing. Yeah, I mean, it, it's fine. You can swear. Hey. Well, it's just a, it's just an absolute. It's just so, it's so badly. It's like so. It looks beautiful, yeah. obviously. Yeah. And I feel like, I feel like nowadays stuff doesn't get the points. In my mind, it doesn't get the points for looking good anymore. Yeah, no, because you've it, got it, computers and yeah. It's hard work, but still. Yeah, I mean, um, the the just. I wish that people would like. I, I don't know. They 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 see the explosions. I like. I get to this point again. Like they just see the explosions and all that stuff, and like they're like, "Oh, we need to have a lot of that stuff," and then hmm. it doesn't matter about all of the other stuff. It's like Michael Bay films with with all. Yeah, his well, it's also the the dialogue and the character. Yeah, are yeah. what really just ruin it for me. Like, um, I love Guardians of the Galaxy, mm-hmm. but Guardians of the Galaxy and um, Firefly actually did this as well to a degree. Both of those are great, but Studios looked at them and went, "Oh, like funny dialogue and like banter between characters. Yep. Let's do that in everything now." Yeah, yeah, and like that, that's let's, what I hated about Thor Ragnarok completely. Let's. Let's do it in Star Wars, even when it doesn't make sense, and let's do it in Star Trek, yeah. especially in especially in Star like when you're you're a professional and you're doing a job, yeah, and you're talking like a seventeen year old on TikTok with your with your commanding officer, and you're like screaming and crying at them for no, and it's all about it's all about emotion, and it's all about like oh my feelings and faith. Yeah. Which is a weird thing because Star Trek's never really been about it's overtly never... been about having faith. Yeah, no, no. But it's it's just so it's so badly written, and the main character is is a joke. The main character is Michael Burnham, and she's sort of she she is the reason for the season in that show. Like she saves, she has saved the universe twice in that in that series. Wow, she is she is explicitly the reason why because they made her the half sister of or the adopted sister of Spock, and she is the reason why Spock is the way he is. Like really? they they were explicit about that, yeah. And she's I think she is now she saves the universe from some AI stuff in season two. I haven't really been keeping up with it. And then she saves the universe again in season three. And she's saved like the mirror universe as well in so some way, shape or form. She's just the savior of all universes, basically. She is the ultimate Mary Sue. Okay. Dang. And it's, and I just, I can't, I can't be dealing with it at all. 
And, and believe it or not, that is the least offensive of the new Star Trek. <laughs> Picard is is like Picard. I've no. I don't think I've ever been so annoyed at a show than with Picard. So the the newest the way- one that, that that they're making. Yes, it's kind of yeah. like read. It's kind of going going back to uh, Picard's storyline, right? Yeah, so it's so this is this is where like the JJ movies I can excuse and these I can't because the JJ movies say we're a different thing, we we're not affecting what you had before. Right? Yeah, now this these is... are directly destroying kind of what we had before. Who who's like it, who's writing these? Are who's directing them? Are are they like? So the showrunner for all of this has been um, Alex Kurtzman. Okay. I think he's written some of it, but there have been a few other writers. Michael Chabon, I think, was part writer, part kind of showrunner yeah. for Picard. Um, Brian Fuller, who did Hannibal, he was attached at one point, but he, I think, became unattached from, I think it was Discovery he became unattached from. Hmm. I'm not entirely sure about that, but it's um, it's it, they, the shows have like 21 producers each, and so there's too many fingers in too many pies, and yeah. they're using Star Trek as this as a platform, yeah. Rather than a, I think I think that's the problem today. They there 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 are no original ideas anymore, and they just keep rehashing mm-hmm. the same shit. And they don't even understand mm. what shit they're using, and right. they they just plow it into the ground. Like you need you need to have people who like understand what they're what they're using, and like e- like even bring in the original creators into it if you can. If you can't bring in the new the original creators, you need to have you need to go and like talk to like the fans of of it and get them on board with with whatever it is you can't just give give them flashy stuff and say like oh we own we own this product and then and then completely screw them over or else you're going to com- you're you're destroying your fan base at that point the, well, yeah well the thing is like there's like these 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 properties have become like anti fan though yeah yeah, it's like if the fans are saying something, they're wrong because they're listening. Is the attitude that they seem to have? They're listening to yeah. the Twitter Ari. Damn Twitter! No, <laughs> oh, Twitter's horrible. Yeah, but if it like with with Star Trek, that's especially egregious because Star Trek as it is now wouldn't exist without the fans. Mm-hmm. And that's more that's more the case with Star Trek than with anything else. Because so you're you're in you're on season two of the original series. Yeah, I just started the se- right? the, the I just finished the first episode of season two. Yeah, right. Okay, so after season two, the show got cancelled. Right, it got okay. canned by CBS, and fans wrote in to CBS in their thousands. Oh. And they kept doing it until the show got a third season. Wow. I didn't know that. And the third that. season allowed it to be syndicated. Yeah, so the third season allowed it to be syndicated, which allowed it to gain steam, which allowed them to make movies, wow. which allowed them to make the next generation, which allowed it to become this phenomenon. And wow. the way Star Trek today is treating its fans is appalling when you have that in mind. Sounds like they need to go do something about it again. The fans. I I feel like you know what I feel like they do. You know what what they should do. I think that fans should go and put together like a full like group fund to buy off Star Trek from CBS, and then ah, oh. and then have like the fans like the the creators within the fan community create an entirely like new like store like a, a new like alternate universe within or like or continue on but I, I would say alternate universe and like or alternate universes that that expand star trek even more kind of like how like star that would 
Star Wars Legend was Le- Legends was well, mm. the original can- canon of Star Wars and all that stuff. But um, yeah. but I think that would be really cool. Like that would be amazing. That is a dream. That yeah. is an absolute dream right there. Yeah. Oh, that if oh, that would be amazing if that happened. Because Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Trek fans, <laughs> yeah. Like post, there was a time when like, so there was a short time, really, where Star Trek was in this really was in the wilderness, mm-hmm. and this like after two thousand five, when I think one of the series got cancelled, and this was leading up to, um, the JJ stuff, and really. Because I mean, a lot of the fans haven't been massively happy with the JJ stuff, and I understand why, right? But yeah, they were keeping it alive again on like YouTube by talking about it and by making fan films. Mm-hmm. And the star and CBS and Paramount were fine with them making fan films. It was like because you're because they're keeping the brand alive, yeah. And as long as they didn't make any any money, money off, off of it. it yeah yeah as long as they were doing it completely like non-profit it was it was fine they just left them alone and then it took it took one it took one studio right one like creator one studio to try and subvert that and try and make some merch and they just and it was the, all the excuse they needed to go like nope we're not doing this anymore bang and they instituted um fan fi- fan film rules Damn. to where now they you can still make them but they have to be 15 minutes or two segments of i think it's two segments of 15 minutes in one story and you can't do a recurring story so you can't make your own series which is what people were doing wow Dang. to keep the brand alive and now you can't now you can't do it under threat of 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 legal action because one guy i mean like this there's no angels in this this is like a really like controversial thing yeah in the in the star trek kind of fandom because people blame the guy who did it guy who like made the merch and people are are blaming cbs and really it's both their fault yeah for yeah yeah for this situation but I mean, yeah, it's in a weird place. It's in a really weird place. See, that's that's kind of why I've I'm creating what I'm creating is because like I want I want to build a universe that other creators can come in and and make their own stuff within, and I want mm. it to be like I guess it's like in a way I want it to be like completely decentralized to where. Yes, I'm I'm creating my own content and you can you can check out my stuff and then someone else can come in and be like, OK, I want to create within within this universe. Here are the here are the mm-hmm. kind of like the parameters of, of creating within the universe. But then you you have your own entire storyline and your own your own worlds and and your own gods and all that stuff. And you have mm-hmm. you have free reign over that and can sell merch and do all this stuff. And and I, I'm, I'm still pl- like I'm still. I still have the ideas in my head, but right now I'm currently mm. just working on my own branding for it. Yeah, and then eventually I want to start like expanding out um, and utilizing different different I- I- ideas and technologies in or- in order to make it happen. So that's right. Com- so this is coming off of your system, right? Yeah, yeah. Coming it, off of reborn in power. Yeah, Re- reborn in power is very modular uh, in nature, and it's it's like if you want if you wanted to homebrew you can literally just go and check out like one of the skills and and then just create your own like little skills within it so if you wanted to you could potentially make a like a a version of reborn and power that fits within your universe very 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 easily and then play within you, mm. your universe cool i and, like that and so i like, like that yeah and so i i i've tried to mold it off of like the different games that I've enjoyed over the years mm. um and also make it kind of different from d and d so that it's still it, it it has that feeling and i I wanted it to be very like i I personally enjoy 
uh, character creation and like in, in all my RPGs and, and just like the customization factor of everything. And so mm-hmm. I made it very customizable. So it can be kind of overwhelming okay. at times. Um, but mm-hmm. it's, but as you progress through the, through the game, you get to choose as a player where you progress and you can choose when you level up as well, because you're basically spending this, like this experience points to level up, to get new mm. skills, to rank them up, and and everything. So mm. it's pretty, right. yeah. It's it's pretty expansive in nature. I have like I have over, I have over like one hundred fifty different skills, uh, within within it. Nice. I have like I have around like over ninety different gear pieces that that are, um, in the game, and. And then I have like five worlds that people can explore. And then I'm I'm using this podcast as a way to kind of expand the lore before the game actually is like officially 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 out, so that people can be like, mm. okay, I want to kind of learn about this stuff. You can listen to the podcast. You can you can uh, go and read through the blogs and all that stuff that I have written. And also when like when it's out, I also want it to be like, oh, you can. You can customize your own stuff and then come and write onto the website and and write your own your own content for it so that people can explore like different different avenues and di- different places that that other p- players can make. It's so like home home brewing I, is very is very like I just want it to be free. I love that. Yeah, I love that. It's like you, you, so you're kind of, you it's so you've sort of built the engine kind of yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I right now I'm yeah. lay, right now I'm laying down the foundation for it, and mm. and it's so that people can build on top of it. Right. Yeah. So this is sort of what we. So this is sort of where the Alchemy Lab kind of came from, mm. which is the YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, and we haven't done any of that stuff yet. <laughs> so Lee, one of the other guys on there. He created a system, which he's still, which is still in development, called Alchemy, mm-hmm. and he's been working on it for years. And it's a really, it's a really fun system of um, where you basically you use playing cards instead of dice. Oh yeah, yeah. So it's a bit more, it's a bit more like um, tactical in a way, mm-hmm. and it's there's an element of randomness, but also you can choose to play certain things at a certain time Hmm. and um that has been that has been such a such an adventure like um working on that and play testing that and tweaking it here and there because like me the the three of us on that channel have been have been working on that with him for a while yeah you you use D &D 5v for for the shattered shattered lands right Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do you, yeah. do you so, plan on using this alchemy system for it eventually? So yeah. So we were, we've been thinking. So I think we're about past. We're definitely past the halfway point in um, Streets of Mir, which mm-hmm. is the campaign we're running on there at the moment. Yeah. Um, and once that's wrapped up, we're going to lean more into alchemy. Definitely. Mm, okay. Um, so this is so doing doing it this way. We're sort of building. I mean, slowly. We're, we're slowly building an audience on on the Alchemy Lab. Yeah, and getting that kind of a little bit bigger. So then we'll bring Alchemy into it, and more people will be exposed to it, and and we'll be kind of explaining what's going on and playing through it and showing it and and doing things like that. Well, I'd be um, I, I'd be interested in in play testing it as well. I, I enjoy play, play testing new camp, new new games. Um, I want I want to play test a few a few other because I know there's a there's a few other in in, in the Creative Den Discord that mm. have have their own game systems. Mm. Um, and I've been wanting to to play play a few of them, but I just like. Everyone is so busy, and we, you know, when when you're trying to pl- thing, yeah. plan plan <laughs> games, is it's, it's really hard. <laughs> um, yeah, but that, yeah, that's like, the thing, man. That's the thing. I I would be very interested in 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 trying out because, like, 
actually reborn in power um originally i was planning on making it into like a card game as well because i had this mm. like, i had this idea of like making it into like oh you you customize your own deck and your deck is your actually your character and then you use that to to face off against the the gm the lore master um and the lore master has his own decks that literally he just randomly chooses that he knows what's what's inside them and he'll be like okay this is this is the story that's going to go going to happen and i'm going to i'm going to start facing off against all the other all the other players and they have their own character decks and then they have to try to beat the lore master in in this entire endeavor and then you could use dice with it you could mm. use the characters and all, character sheets and all that stuff um mm. but like that's why like it was that it was modular in its system and and like i wanted mm. it to be like oh like each skill is a different card and then you you could do that and now i have i have even like bigger ideas for for it and i might end up trying to figure out ways to make it happen but i might make it into like a i i don't know i don't know the full extent of of how far i can i can make this but i was i was thinking about making it into a uh like a crypto nft kind of gaming ex- experience where people can actually like mm-hmm. use um I know, like there's like there's NFT games. I, I'm not, I'm not sure how how familiar you are with with the crypto, like universe, like metaverse I'm, and stuff. I mean, I I have a passing familiarity with it. Yeah, um, I've 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 gotten more into it, and and recently I feel like like NFTs are a good way for artists to to be able to sell to be able to sell their artwork. Um, mm-hmm. And actually, like, like build value within within their own their own artwork. And then I was mm-hmm. thinking, like, oh, what if what if each of these like little little trade like tradable token things um, mm. are actually like different like skills and stuff, and like, like a card game. And then you use that mm. you use that. Uh, it's kind of like you know trading Pokemon cards and stuff and and all that. Yeah. Um, but I think that would be a really cool idea to make it into like a, an actual game and then have it be like, it would be decentralized at that point because then people can just create their own little cards for for the game and then and then sell sell them for like new skills for people to use in their deck and then and then play as like different types of characters and stuff. Oh, that would be really cool. Yeah, that would be really cool. I I mean, yeah. I would have no idea how to do that. Yeah, I, I, this I is the this that, is the thing with me. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I'm not I'm no like I'm I have no idea when it comes to computing. Really, like I can use a computer, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, same, same, same. I I I would need to find people to to figure it out how to how to do that, and um, I just think that 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 concept would be really cool, and it would it would yeah. help it would help with. So is it you? So do you use it with dice? Yeah, I, I use it with dice currently. Um, right. And uh, the the system itself is very... It's it's good, but I I, mm. I know my limit the limitations in it because I've I've been only working on it like mainly by myself. Like I, I've mm. only gotten some ideas from 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 some friends and, and stuff, but it's been mainly just me working on the game. So I know there's like limitations within the game system that uh, I haven't been able to like really hone down on. So I've been trying to play test it as much as I can, uh, get mm. get different people like in on it to to try to understand like where I need to work work on. And right now the current thing is I need to make sure it is um, understandable because sometimes people just overlook some some details within the actual rule book and mm. it's, it's getting around the rule book is, is my thing is I, I want to get around the rule book. I don't, I don't want the rule book to be like, yeah, oh, I, the main thing. I hear you, man. That's the thing where you like create something. You're like, I know what I mean. So yeah. other people will, but yeah. you're like, and then, and then you play test it and they're like, I don't, I don't get what you, what you're talking about here. What's... Yeah. Yeah. I, what do you, what do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sort of doing so. This is a very new thing for me as well. Off the back of alchemy being a thing that that Lee's been doing that I've been helping with. Yeah, I've started 
also creating one, which is um, which is at the moment it's called Free West, and it's sort of a Wild West TTRPG type thing. Oh, but yeah. the, I, I've so I think it actually sounds really similar to to um, Reborn in Power in a way. Yeah, but I want I've I've pulled the dice out of it. And I've gone with um, like an AP system, like yeah. action point system, and it's very skills focused again. Mm-hmm. But I want it to be like incredibly simple, but deep at the same time, like yeah. accessible, but then like that you can really get into it and really kind of tweak your character and tweak the skills they have and like develop develop them over the course of either a short kind of adventure or a longer campaign like a series of stuff yeah it's it's finding that middle ground is very it's very difficult to like get get to that mm. point because i've gone through many different iterations of reborn in power and like even reborn in power was like is like i think it's my my fourth name of my of a game (laughs) um Mm. So yeah, the system itself has been through a lot, and like even with your system, like you'll you'll find you'll you'll like hone it down. You're like, oh, this is this is cool, this is cool, and then you realize like, oh, maybe there's like new ways that I can explore different avenues. And so, at a certain point, you you have to find what you enjoy. I guess is my advice is is when when you're creating a system, just find what you enjoy and enjoy mm-hmm. it, enjoy playing it. And then ho- mm. hopefully other people will, will enjoy it too. Cause like, you know, whenever you're writing a book, some people, some people will, will enjoy it. And then some people will not, you'll have your critics and you'll have your fans. Um, mm-hmm. Same thing for everything. Um, sometimes, sometimes you, you won't have as much success though, because marketing is a pain. <laughs> it is. It is such a pain. <laughs> that's the, that's the main thing with being like, an independent author yeah is is the it's you're doing everything mm-hmm. <laughs> like you're doing the the like you're you're making the cover you're putting it out you're you're trying to balance keeping interest mm-hmm. up for the the book while not being super annoying and spamming posts all the time yeah because that will put people off yeah and, and it's like, and it's, like- i coming up with content to post is is super like i i never know like what i should write or type and so i have to like u- reuse different pieces of art that i've gotten and then i it just feels off to me like like do, do people want to see the same thing over and over again <laughs> mm. right yeah yeah no absolutely it's like the thing with kodiak it's like um that's the the thing that sort of struck me the other day. It's like I I want to put out four of these things a year, which means four covers a year. Yeah. Which means that the art is going to have to be consistent. Yeah. Which means that the designs are going to have to be consistent. Which means I'm going to have to work out different angles here of how this is going to how the ship is going to look. And things like that, mm-hmm. and it's it's just it's it's like an extra little headache on top of do, the rest of the stuff that you've got to look, work on. Do you use a a commissioned artist for your ships and stuff, or do you for for Kodiak? So actually, yeah, I use so I used an artist um, for all of my books except for Kodiak, mm. um, where I use someone else who is on uh, who is. Um, on mines, that's it's a fickle flame on mines. Oh, fickle very flame. good. Yeah, very good artist. Um, yeah, yeah, he's very good, and he did a great job. Um, and he, the only thing with him is he is he is he's pricey. Like you get a good product, yeah, you get good art, but that dude, you, you're paying for you're paying for good art. Yeah, and you're yeah. paying good art price. So there's that side of it as well, where it's like, okay, so four of these a year, that's how many 
oh wow that's a lot <laughs> that's a lot of money yeah. so and then yeah yeah it, it's an investment and then you never know if you're going to get that return on investment because the the biggest thing is is knowing how to knowing when and how to market your your product whatever you're selling um and with with right with writing and all that stuff it it's it is a pain and in, in figuring out that like happy medium fi- figuring out like where where to where to get like that fan base i guess um and how people are successful in the industry i mm. I, I think it I, I think it's a matter of of just creating a community uh, that will mm. I, and it's not even it's not even um it's not even if it's a community of of people who just enjoy your work like yeah that that would be great but i feel like if we like all the creators within our little our little group uh were to mm-hmm. just support each other and and like purchase each other's stuff and then promote that that stuff as well as much as they can then i i think we could you know sustain ourselves i, I, I think that'd be good that is i think that's been one of the best things with minds yeah I think there's still that 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 site has growing pains. It needs to work out a little bit. Yes, very but much so. It has been, it has been probably, it's probably been the best outlet for me as a writer. I think that and Parlor surprisingly was pa- quite good. Parlor was good before be- it got. Yep. Yeah. Ah. Before it got nuked, and I haven't really been back on it since. And the other the other ones of that ilk don't have the kind of don't have the kind of art thing that Parla had mm-hmm. for that brief time. It was it was this fan, it was you know you I mean I think that's where I where I first connected with you yeah. through Parla. Yeah, yeah. Par- and- Parlor was actually uh, it was very. It, it it just felt it just felt new it was like it was like the first days of like facebook or something like that and and like i mean with parlor it actually it actually felt like there was a community that was growing there that everyone was actually just wanting to talk and all that stuff and then now it was when i was mm-hmm. getting very ir- it was irritating to hear people say like oh parlor is for like all these right wing nuts and crazy conspiracy people and like yeah there were mm-hmm. those people on on there but there's also those people on every other site and, and yeah and like there are those people on 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 all of the mainstream ones as well yeah and so like and but we had our like we had our little a little group going on and like and the, our whole feed was just filled with artwork and 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 stories and it was growing and, that was the thing and, as well yeah it was growing and and the creatives den is is like just like like a, sh- like a show of it, and also like all all of our other like I I'm in a few other Discord servers as well that we like all joined up with, and I I I want I I know that Minds is also kind of like that, but I feel like the whole the whole bot situation, um, mm. and like I don't know, like, and and not being able to post multiple multiple pieces pieces of art on it, um. And it it feels more professional. It doesn't feel as like like my mine's feels more professional than Parlor did. Whereas Par Parlor felt more like community driven, and like you can actually just like have like a friend and like post post like a like a nice picture. Whereas mine's it feels like oh, uh, this is like if if we're trying to do like a business stuff, we can't be like posting too much like random. Like oh, this is what I ate today. This is what I I did today. I mean, yeah, you you can do that, but like if I if I feel like if you're running a business, I it, it doesn't doesn't feel it doesn't fit with with your feed of how of how you're mm. of how you're molding it. That's just right. my, that's just my opinion. Well, the boosting as well. Yeah, the boosting. I mean, the boosting as well is another thing. Yeah, like when, where when I, you'll always have that. Yeah, when it, whenever whenever I boot boosted my post the first time it, it literally would just say like oh you you got a thousand views and then i didn't get any likes on it it's like what like <laughs> I, like not one <laughs> it's not even worth i think it. it's because 
I think it was cycling through the bot. So I think that's why oh, yeah. you would get a lot of bot views very quickly because now you get a lot more. It happens a lot slower, but you get a lot more engagement yeah. on stuff. I've yeah. noticed with, with boosting. Yeah. I, I noticed that with Kodiak. I got loads of engagement on that. Yeah. I've been, I've been I was waiting. Just like, wow. I've been waiting to boost my post uh, until, until my, my third season comes out. So mm. that, that's when I plan on boosting more posts. But for now, I guess I'm just going to have to figure out more content of what I need to put down. Um, but mm. now we, we, we went on a tangent there <laughs> for a while. A, a little bit, but, you know, this it's, is sort of what what podcasts that I'm involved in descend into. Yeah. <laughs> just like tangent after tangent. Yeah, yeah. Um, I did have a few more questions for you. Um, Go ahead. Uh, are there... Any genres you'd be interested in testing your hand at? Ooh. What do I do at the moment? So, yeah, sci-fi, fantasy. I'd like to lean more into horror. I'd like to try that. Yeah. Like dip really far, like dip in properly into horror. Yeah, I, I, would, but that's... I would enjoy that too. Like, I feel like that'd be very interesting. Hmm. I think... Um, I think doing um, doing um, Shattered Lands, Streets of Mere on, on YouTube has really put me in the mood of like um, thriller yeah. and like detective thriller and spy thriller and things like that. I, th- I would love to try that too. That actually sounds like fun. Yeah. Um, I don't really know what other genres there would be aside from those that I would that fit into kind of that fit into my mold at the same time. Yeah. Like I'm... I have no interest in, in, I, you know, I would love to try. I would love to try writing something for like, try writing something for kids. Oh yeah. Like, like a to little... just see how that would work. Yeah. I, I, I've thought about that too. I've thought about maybe making like a little, a little kid story line. Um, I've, mm. I've actually written a few of them, but they were like really, really random and just, crazy stuff but i mean that's what kids like so <laughs> like um, yeah well like then, the go ahead like the kind of spice like i feel like kid spy stuff is always yeah i mean there's loads of them though that's the thing yeah like spy kids and uh kids, yeah, ne- and kids like next door Rider stuff kids next door right <laughs> um <laughs> and then yeah for for me like i i've actually been uh my my best friend he has a daughter who is, who is six now, and mm-hmm. we got her starting to play Reborn in Power a little bit actually, and she's like an I, she's like an ice princess, like like um, like uh from Frozen, you know, she she enjoys Frozen, mm-hmm. so we were like, okay, let's make her an ice princess that has control for like dragons and stuff, mm. and and so we did that, and she really enjoys it, and now like my whole new uh, my whole new podcast setup uh, has like I have multiple mics and and I, I can play music in the background while, while it goes on and it's nice. really it's really cool it's really cool. Um, I wish I could show you, but like through Discord, it it, it wouldn't play. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but damn it 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 is it is legit. You you. If you if you listen to my podcast on um so I, I my last episode, my, my final episode of the second season uh comes mm-hmm. out on September twelfth. Uh would be coming out on September twelfth. Uh because this, this podcast is gonna be coming out in in the third season, that this this one that we're doing. Um but mm-hmm. on on that one, on the September twelfth one, it's gonna be my sixtieth episode and that one is a game session with one of my with one of my friends and we use like the whole system and there's like there's like eerie like background music in, in it and like it, it's gonna go into a storyline that I plan on on diving into next year and it's gonna be like uh this is like the precursor to a camp the next reborn in power campaign that I'm gonna be running and I'm gonna be live streaming that one. So that's that's gonna be next year. Um very good. That, what what is what are you gonna what platform are you using for live streaming? Um, 
I'm not sure. I've been, I want to do, well, I'm probably going to end up using YouTube just cause that, I mean, that that's out there, but, but rumble was something on my, on my list. Just, they haven't gotten their live streaming like completely set up yet. So I'm hoping they, they have that set up by the time, uh, I start next year. Um, mm, right. And, but YouTube most likely I'm not, I'm not familiar with it, so I'm gonna to have to get some like some of my friends who are technical to fi- figure out how to do that stuff. Um, but I I would I would like to try to fi- like get that all all handled, and then I want to um I want to try to get players in on it who are very experienced in in role playing and, and live streaming all that stuff, and then have them be basically it's, it's going to be very heavily sci-fi uh influence and stuff it's it's a science fantasy universe um so there's mm. there's still fantasy elements in, into it but i i this campaign is going to be very like all about like the technology uh there's going to be space travel space space combat with like ships and and stuff and the whole one too mm. Uh, that all that is all music to my ears <laughs> yeah so it, if yeah. if you would want to i i will be i will end up being like starting to re- recruit for players and if if you wanted to to be in that in that i'd be i'd be more than happy to uh have you test out 100 percent. yeah 100 percent. yeah I, I would just need to get i i need to get some webcams so that i i can get that all situated and then have like have all that uh handled for when we do start to uh, live stream it so i've never done that before nice. so that that's going to be new to me <laughs> but like people I'll who... start working on the voice oh yeah <laughs> that, that'll be fun that'll be definitely really really fun <laughs> yeah so, man that sounds awesome um so uh with that being said uh are is there anything else you would like to uh, talk about um uh i'm not sure i don't i think i think i'm covered i think we've covered everything i think we've covered everything and then so yeah yeah we did um and i think that definitely i would i would very much enjoy like having another conversation with you and and possibly like diving deeper into maybe some kind of like uh some kind of concept of of writing and like maybe like even like how how you go about writing but that could be like for another another podcast episode and um and maybe like like sci-fi elements and tabletop rpgs and even have have you come on for 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 a uh a game session or or two if you want (laughs) yeah i am i am down for all of that that's all sounds again all music to my ears loving it awesome um so uh would you like to plug any any uh social social media website well um matt waterhouse author on minds uh of course um so uh also youtube i know youtube is sort of um it's not it's not the the friendliest place to be but we are a friendly place to be um so the alchemy lab is is where we are on youtube that is quite a general title so if you if you search for like the alchemy lab shattered lands you'll probably find us um and we do uh yeah sort of fantasy steampunk noir uh dnd featuring mm-hmm. a pair of grizzled detectives uh currently taking on the fantasy version of the mafia cool. so uh that's a lot of fun uh we've got a lot of episodes of that so yeah uh dive dive right in um i'm pretty sure i don't use twitter because twitter is awful Same. um yeah i mean that's those are the main two i think yeah those are the main two my the minds account and uh and the youtube all right and uh, uh, we would love some more subs and <laughs> we have 22 at the moment yeah <laughs> I mean, it's, it's it's difficult to to get those those numbers up. I I, I know how how it is, um, but I'm definitely. It's going... one of those things that like you get. You, I think it starts slowly, 
Yeah, and then and, and then if you so, persist with it, it picks up. Yep, yep, yeah. Um, and also check out Red Saints, uh, the Eye of the Universe, and uh, Kodiak, and as well as the Four Guardians. And then mm-hmm. uh, thank you, Matt, for coming on. And thank you for having me. Have a great day. You too, man. I thank you for listening to our conversation. If you'd like to hear more guest entries like this one, go over and become a free member at OrthanianAnthologies.com to not miss another episode like this. And if you're interested in becoming a guest yourself, you can fill out an entry form at the site's homepage. Until next time, travelers, be safe. Stay safe. And if death comes to you, may you be reborn in power.